Václav Havel, Czech pronunciation, V A T S L A V A V E L, listen, the 5th of October 1936 to the 18th of December 2011, was a Czech statesman, writer, and former dissident who served as the last president of Czechoslovakia from 1989 until the dissolution of Czechoslovakia in 1992, and then as the first president of the Czech Republic from 1993 to 2003. As a writer of Czech literature, he is known for his plays, essays, and memoirs. His educational opportunities having been limited by his bourgeois background, Havel first rose to prominence as a playwright. In works such as The Garden Party and The Memorandum, Havel used an absurdist style to criticize communism. After participating in the Prague Spring and being blacklisted after the invasion of Czechoslovakia, he became more politically active and helped found several dissident initiatives, including Charter 77 and the Committee for the Defense of the Unjustly Prosecuted. His political activities brought him under the surveillance of the secret police and he spent multiple stints in prison, the longest being nearly four years, between 1979 and 1983. Havel's Civic Forum Party played a major role in the Velvet Revolution that toppled communism in Czechoslovakia in 1989. He assumed the presidency shortly thereafter, and was re-elected in a landslide the following year and after Slovak independence in 1993. Havel was instrumental in dismantling the Warsaw Pact and expanding NATO membership eastward. Many of his stances and policies, such as his opposition to Slovak independence, condemnation of the Czechoslovak treatment of Sudeton Germans after World War II, and granting of general amnesty to all those imprisoned under communism, were very controversial domestically. As such, at the end of his presidency, he enjoyed greater popularity abroad than at home. Havel continued his life as a public intellectual after his presidency, launching several initiatives including the Prague Declaration on European Conscience and Communism, the Vise 97 Foundation, and the Forum 2000 Annual Conference. Havel's political philosophy was one of anti-consumerism, humanitarianism, environmentalism, civil activism, and direct democracy. He supported the Czech Green Party from 2004 until his death. He received numerous accolades during his lifetime including the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the Gandhi Peace Prize, the Philadelphia Liberty Medal, the Order of Canada, the Four Freedoms Award, the Ambassador of Conscience Award, and the Hanno R. Ellenbogen Citizenship Award. The 2012-2013 academic year at the College of Europe was named in his honor. He is considered by some to be one of the most important intellectuals of the 20th century. The International Airport in Prague was renamed to Václav Havel Airport Prague in 2012. Topic: <laughs> Early life. Havel was born in Prague on the 5th of October 1936 into a wealthy family celebrated in Czechoslovakia for its entrepreneurial and cultural accomplishments. His grandfather, Václav Havel, a real estate developer, built a famous entertainment complex on Prague's Wenceslas Square. His father, Václav Maria Havel, was the real estate developer behind the suburban Barandov Terraces, located on the highest point of Prague, next door to which his uncle, Milos Havel, built one of the largest film studios in Europe. Havel's mother, Bozina Vavrekova, also came from an influential family. Her father was a Czechoslovak ambassador and a well known journalist. In the early 1950s, because of his class background, Havel entered into a four year apprenticeship as a chemical laboratory assistant and simultaneously took evening classes at a gymnasium. He completed his secondary education in 1954. For political reasons, he was not accepted into any post-secondary school with a humanities program, therefore, he opted for studies at the Faculty of Economics of the Czech Technical University in Prague but dropped out after two years. On 9 July 1964, Havel married Olga Splihalova. <laughs> Early theatre career The intellectual tradition of his family was essential for Havel's lifetime adherence to the humanitarian values of the Czech culture. 
After finishing his military service 1957 Havel had to bring his intellectual ambitions in line with the given circumstances, especially with the restrictions imposed on him as a descendant of a former middle-class family. He found employment in Prague's theatre world as a stagehand at Prague's Theatre ABC, Davadlo ABC, and then at the Theatre on Balustrade, Davadlo N.A. Zabradli. Simultaneously, he was a student of dramatic arts by correspondence at the Theatre Faculty of the Academy of Performing Arts in Prague DAMU. His first own full-length play performed in public, besides various vaudeville collaborations, was The Garden Party 1963. Presented in a series of Theatre of the Absurd, at the Theatre on Balustrade, this play won him international acclaim. The play was soon followed by The Memorandum, one of his best-known plays, and the increased difficulty of concentration, all at the Theatre on Balustrade. In 1968, The Memorandum was also brought to the public theatre in New York, which helped to establish Havel's reputation in the United States. The public theatre continued to produce his plays in the following years. After 1968, Havel's plays were banned from the theatre world in his own country, and he was unable to leave Czechoslovakia to see any foreign performances of his works. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Political dissident. During the first week of the invasion of Czechoslovakia, Havel assisted the resistance by providing an on-air narrative via Radio Free Czechoslovakia station at Liberets. Following the suppression of the Prague Spring in 1968, he was banned from the theatre and became more politically active. Short of money, he took a job at Krakenos Brewery in Trutnov, an experience he wrote about in his play Audience. This play, along with two other, Vanek, Plays, so-called because of the recurring character Ferdinand Vanek, a stand-in for Havel, became distributed in semizdat form across Czechoslovakia, and greatly added to Havel's reputation of being a leading dissident. Several other Czech writers later wrote their own plays featuring Vanek. This reputation was cemented with the publication of the Charter 77 Manifesto, written partially in response to the imprisonment of members of the Czech psychedelic rock band The Plastic People of the Universe. Havel had attended their trial, which centered on the group's nonconformity in having long hair, using obscenities in their music, and their overall involvement in the Czech underground. Havel co founded the Committee for the Defense of the Unjustly Prosecuted in 1979. His political activities resulted in multiple stays in prison, and constant government surveillance and questioning by the secret police. Stany Bezpechnost. His longest stay in prison, from May 1979 to February 1983, is documented in letters to his wife that were later published as letters to Olga. He was known for his essays, most particularly The Power of the Powerless, in which he described a societal paradigm in which citizens were forced to live within a lie under the communist regime. In describing his role as a dissident, Havel wrote in 1979. We never decided to become dissidents. We have been transformed into them, without quite knowing how, sometimes we have ended up in prison without precisely knowing how. We simply went ahead and did certain things that we felt we ought to do, and that seemed to us decent to do, nothing more nor less." Samuel Beckett's 1982 short play, Catastrophe, was dedicated to Havel while he was held as a political prisoner in Czechoslovakia. Topic: Presidency. On the 29th of December 1989, while he was leader of the Civic Forum, Havel became president of Czechoslovakia by a unanimous vote of the Federal Assembly. He had long insisted that he was not interested in politics and had argued that political change in the country should be induced through autonomous civic initiatives rather than through the official institutions. In 1990, soon after his election, Havel was awarded the Prize for Freedom of the Liberal International. In 1990, Czechoslovakia held its first free elections in 44 years, resulting in a sweeping victory for Civic Forum and its Slovak counterpart, Public Against Violence. 
Between them, they commanded strong majorities in both houses of the legislature, and tallied the highest popular vote share recorded for a free election in the country. Havel retained his presidency, despite increasing political tensions between the Czechs and the Slovaks in 1992. Havel supported the retention of the Czech and Slovak Federative Republic prior to the dissolution of the country. Havel sought re election in 1992. Although no other candidate filed, when the vote came on 3 July, he failed to get a majority due to a lack of support from Slovak deputies. The largest Czech political party, the Civic Democratic Party, let it be known that it would not support any other candidate. After the Slovaks issued their declaration of independence, he resigned as president on 20 July, saying that he would not preside over the country's breakup. However, when the Czech Republic was created as one of two successor states, he stood for election as its first president on 26 January 1993, and won. Although he was nominally the new country's chief executive, the framers of the constitution of the Czech Republic intended to vest most of the real power in the prime minister. However, owing to his prestige, he still commanded great moral authority, and the presidency acquired a greater role than the framers intended. For instance, largely due to his influence, the Communist Party of Bohemia and Moravia KSCM, successor to the KSC's branch in the Czech lands, was kept on the margins for most of his presidency. Havel suspected that the KSCM was still an unreformed Stalinist party. Havel's popularity abroad surpassed his popularity at home, and he was often the object of controversy and criticism. During his time in office, Havel stated that the expulsion of the indigenous Sudeton German population after World War II was immoral, causing a great controversy at home. He also extended general amnesty as one of his first acts as president, in an attempt to lessen the pressure in overcrowded prisons as well as to release political prisoners and persons who may have been falsely imprisoned during the communist era. Havel felt that many of the decisions by the previous regime's courts should not be trusted, and that most of those in prison had not received fair trials. However, critics claimed that this amnesty led to a significant increase in the crime rate, the total number of crimes doubled, as did the number of murders. Several of the worst crimes in the history of the Czech criminology were committed by criminals released in this amnesty. Within four years of the Velvet Revolution and following another two amnesties declared by Havel, criminality had more than tripled since 1989. According to Havel's memoir to the castle and back, most of those who were released had less than a year to serve before their sentences ended, but statistics contradict Havel's claims. In an interview with Carol H. Vizdala, included in To the Castle and Back, Havel expressed his feeling that it was his most important accomplishment as president to have contributed to the dissolution of the Warsaw Pact. According to his statement the dissolution was very complicated. The infrastructure created by the Warsaw Pact was part of the economies of all member states, and the pact's dissolution necessitated restructuring that took many years to complete. Furthermore, it took time to dismantle the Warsaw Pact's institutions, for example, it took two years for Soviet troops to fully withdraw from Czechoslovakia. Following a legal dispute with his sister-in-law Dagmar Havlova, wife of his brother Ivan M. Havel, Havel decided to sell his 50% stake in the Lucerna Palace on Wenceslas Square in Prague, built from 1907 to 1921 by his grandfather, also named Václav Havel, spelled Václav, one of the multifunctional palaces in the center of the once booming pre-World War I Prague. In a transaction arranged by Marian Calva, Havel sold the estate to Václav Junek, a former communist spy in France and head of the soon-to-be bankrupt conglomerate Chemipal Group, who later openly admitted that he bribed politicians of the Czech Social Democratic Party. In January 1996, Olga Havlova, his wife of 32 years, died of cancer at 62. In December 1996, Havel who had been a chain smoker for a long time, was diagnosed with lung cancer. The disease reappeared two years later. He quit smoking. In 1997, he remarried, to actress Dagmar Veskernova. Havel was among those influential politicians who contributed most to the transition of NATO from being an anti-Warsaw Pact alliance to its present form. 
Havel advocated vigorously for the inclusion of former Warsaw Pact members, like the Czech Republic, into the Western Alliance. Havel was re elected president in 1998. He had to undergo a colostomy in Innsbruck when his colon ruptured while he was on holiday in Austria. On 30 January 2003, Havel signed the letter of the eight. Havel left office after his second term as Czech president ended on 2 February 2003. Václav Klaus, one of his greatest political adversaries, was elected his successor as president on 28 February 2003. Margaret Thatcher wrote of the two men in her foreign policy treatise Statecraft, reserving the greater respect for Havel. Havel's dedication to democracy and his steadfast opposition to the communist ideology earned him admiration. Topic Post-presidential career Beginning in 1997, Havel hosted Forum 2000, an annual conference to identify the key issues facing civilization and to explore ways to prevent the escalation of conflicts that have religion, culture or ethnicity as their primary components. In 2005, the former president occupied the Kluger Chair for Modern Culture at the John W. Kluger Center of the United States Library of Congress, where he continued his research on human rights. In November and December 2006, Havel spent eight weeks as a visiting artist in residence at Columbia University. The stay was sponsored by the Columbia Arts Initiative and featured performances, and panels center ing on his life and ideas, including a public conversation with former U.S. President Bill Clinton. Concurrently, the untitled theater company No. 61 launched a Havel Festival, the first complete festival of his plays in various venues throughout New York City, including the Brick Theater and the Ohio Theater, in celebration of his 70th birthday. Havel was a member of the World Future Society and addressed the Society's members on 4 July 1994. His speech was later printed in the Futurist magazine July 1995. Havel was still admired, even revered, by Czech citizens. In the Greatest Czech TV Show, the Czech spin-off of the BBC 100 Greatest Britons show in 2005, Havel received the third biggest amount of voices, so he was elected to be third greatest Czech when he was still alive. Havel's memoir of his experience as president, To the Castle and Back, was published in May 2007. The book mixes an interview in the style of disturbing the piece with actual memoranda he sent to his staff and modern diary entries and recollections. On the 4th of August 2007, Havel met with members of the Belarus Free Theater at his summer cottage in the Czech Republic in a show of his continuing support, which has been instrumental in the theater's attaining international recognition and membership in the European Theatrical Convention. Havel's first new play in almost two decades, Leaving, was published in November 2. 2007, and was to have had its world premiere in June 2008 at the Prague Theatre de Vadlo na Vinoradic, but the theatre withdrew it in December as it felt it could not provide the technical support needed to mount the play. The play instead premiered on of May 2008 at the Archer Theatre to standing ovations. Havel based the play on King Lear, by William Shakespeare, and on The Cherry Orchard, by Anton Chekhov. Chancellor Wilhelm Riga is the central character of Leaving, who faces a crisis after being removed from political power. The play had its English-language premiere at the Orange Tree Theatre in London and its American premiere at the Wilma Theatre in Philadelphia. Havel subsequently directed a film version of the play, which premiered in the Czech Republic on the 22nd of March 2011. Other works included the short sketch Pet Tet, a modern sequel to Unveiling, and The Pig, or Václav Havel's Hunt for a Pig, which was premiered in BRNO at Theatre Goose on a String and had its English language premiere at the 3LD Art and Technology Center in New York, in a production from Untitled Theatre Company No. 61, in a production workshopped in the Ice Factory Festival in 2011 and later revived as a full production in 2014, becoming a New York Times critic's pick. In 2008, Havel became a member of the European Council on Tolerance and Reconciliation. He met U.S. President Barack Obama in private before Obama's departure after the end of the European Union and United States summit in Prague in April 2009. 
Havel was the chair of the Human Rights Foundation's International Council and a member of the International Advisory Council of the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation. Havel was a supporter of the campaign for the establishment of a United Nations Parliamentary Assembly, an organization which campaigns for democratic reformation of the United Nations, and the creation of a more accountable international political system. From the 1980s, Havel supported the Green Politics Movement, partly due to his friendship with the co-founder of the German Die Grünen Party Milan Horathek. From 2004 until his death, he supported the Czech Green Party. Topic. Death Havel died on the morning of 18 December 2011, at age 75, at his country home in Radicek. A week before his death, he met with his longtime friend, the Dalai Lama, in Prague. Havel appeared in a wheelchair. Prime Minister Petr Neckers announced a three day mourning period from 21 to 23 December, the date announced by President Václav Klaus for the state funeral. The funeral mass was held at St. Vitus Cathedral, celebrated by the Archbishop of Prague Dominic Ducker and Havel's old friend Bishop Václav Maley. During the service, a 21-gun salute was fired in the former president's honor, and as per the family's request, a private ceremony followed at Prague's Strasnice Crematorium. Havel's ashes were placed in the family tomb in the Vinoradi Cemetery in Prague. On 23 December 2011, the Václav Havel Tribute Concert was held in Prague's Palace Lucerna. Reactions Within hours Havel's death was met with numerous tributes, including from U.S. President Barack Obama, British Prime Minister David Cameron, German Chancellor Angela Merkel and former Polish President Lech Wałęsa. Merkel called Havel, a great European, while Wałęsa said he should have been given the Nobel Peace Prize. The Russian embassy sent an official condolence on behalf of the President Dmitry Medvedev and Prime Minister Vladimir Putin. At news of his death, former U.S. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, a native of Czechoslovakia, said, He was one of the great figures of the 20th century. While Czech expatriate novelist Milan Kundera said, Václav Havel's most important work is his own life. Communists took the opportunity to criticize Havel. Communist Party of Bohemia and Moravia leader Wojtek Philip stated that Havel was a very controversial person and that his words often conflicted with his deeds. He criticized Havel for having supported NATO's war against Yugoslavia, repeating the charge that Havel had called the event a humanitarian bombing. Even though Havel had expressly and emphatically denied ever having used such a phrase, an online petition organized by one of the best-known Czech and Slovak film directors, Ferro Fenech, calling on the government and the parliament to rename Prague Ruzin Airport to Václav Havel International Airport attracted, in a week after 20 December 2011, support of over 80,000 Czech Republic and foreign signatories. It was announced that the airport would be renamed the Václav Havel Airport Prague on 5 October 2012, reviewing a new biography by Michael Zantowski. Yale historian Marcy Shaw summarized his challenges as president. Havel's message, We are all responsible, we are all guilty, was not popular. He enacted a general amnesty for all but the most serious criminals, apologized on behalf of Czechoslovakia for the post-World War II expulsion of the Sudeton Germans and resisted demands for a more draconian purge of secret police collaborators. These things were not popular either. And as the government undertook privatization and restitution, Havel confronted pyramid schemes, financial corruption and robber baron capitalism. He saw his country fall apart, if bloodlessly, becoming in 1993 the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Awards. In 1986, Havel received the Erasmus Prize, and in 1990, he received the Gottlieb Duttweiler Prize for his outstanding contributions to the well-being of the wider community. 
In the same year he received the Freedom Medal. In 1993, he was elected an honorary fellow of the Royal Society of Literature. On the 4th of July 1994, Vitzwav Havel was awarded the Philadelphia Liberty Medal. In his acceptance speech, he said, "The idea of human rights and freedoms must be an integral part of any meaningful world order." Yet I think it must be anchored in a different place, and in a different way, than has been the case so far. If it is to be more than just a slogan mocked by half the world, it cannot be expressed in the language of departing era, and it must not be mere froth floating on the subsiding waters of faith in a purely scientific relationship to the world. In 1997, Havel received the Prince of Asturias Award for Communication and Humanities and the Pre Mondial Chino del Duca. In 2002, he was the third recipient of the Hanno R. Ellenbogen Citizenship Award presented by the Prague Society for International Cooperation. In 2003, he was awarded the International Gandhi Peace Prize by the Government of India for his outstanding contribution towards world peace and upholding human rights in most difficult situations through Gandhian means. He was the inaugural recipient of Amnesty International's Ambassador of Conscience Award for his work in promoting human rights. He received the U.S. Presidential Medal of Freedom, and he was appointed as an honorary companion of the Order of Canada. In January 2008, the Europe based a different view cited Havel to be one of the 15 champions of world democracy. In 2008 he was also awarded the Giuseppe Motta Medal for Support for Peace and Democracy. As a former Czech president, Havel was a member of the Club of Madrid. In 2009 he was awarded the Quadriga Award, but decided to return it in 2011 following the announcement of Vladimir Putin as one of the 2011 award recipients. Havel also received multiple honorary doctorates from various universities such as the prestigious Institut d'études politiques de Paris in 2009, and was a foreign associate member of the French Académie des Sciences Morales et Politiques from October 1992 until his death, on 10 October 2011. Havel was awarded by the Georgian president Mikhail Saakashvili with the St. George Victory Order. In November 2014, he became only the fourth non-American honored with a bust in the U.S. Capitol. <laughs> State honors and awards Honors <laughs> 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 Topic Awards Netherlands, Giesenpenning, nineteen ninety five, Vladingen, India, Gandhi Peace Prize, oh eight, two thousand and three, Delhi. Topic Memorials Topic Vitsuav Havel Prize for Creative Descent In April 2012, Havel's widow, Dagmar Havlova, authorized the creation of the Vitsuav Havel Prize for Creative Descent. The prize was created by the New York-based Human Rights Foundation and is awarded at the annual Oslo Freedom Forum. The prize will celebrate those who engage in creative dissent, exhibiting courage and creativity to challenge injustice and live in truth. The Vitsuav Havel Library The Vitsuav Havel Library, located in Prague, is a charitable organization founded by Dagmar Havlova, Karol Schwarzenberg and Miloslav Petrasek on 26 July 2004. It maintains a collection of pictorial, audio and written materials and other artifacts linked to Vitsuav Havel. The institution gathers these materials for the purpose of digitization, documentation and research and to promote his ideas. It organizes lectures, holds conferences and social and cultural events that introduce the public to the work of Vitsuav Havel and club discussion meetings on current social issues. It runs educational activities for second-level students. 
It is also involved in the issuing of publications. The library makes accessible Vitsuav Havel's literary, philosophical, and political writings, and provides a digital reading room for researchers and students in the Czech Republic and elsewhere. In May 2012, the library opened a branch New York City, USA, named the Vitsuav Havel Library Foundation. In 2014, the Vitsuav Havel Library moved to larger premises at Ostrovny 13, in the center of Prague. Topic: The Vitsuav Havel Building of the European Parliament. In July 2017, the European Parliament opened a new building on its official Strasbourg site. The building was named after Havel and decorated with a bust of the former Czech president. Topic: The Vitsuav Havel Memory in Zagreb. On 4 October 2016, the day before what would have been the 80th birthday of Václav Havel, his photograph was presented on the fountain in Croatian capital Zagreb. Croatian Czech society proposed the Václav Havel Street in Zagreb. Topic: <laughs> The Václav Havel Boulevard and Memorial Plaque in Kiev. In November 2016, Václav Havel Boulevard was opened in Kiev, Ukraine. The new name has replaced the one given during Soviet era when Boulevard was named in honor of the communist politician Janusz Leps. In December, First Deputy Chairman Irina Hereshchenko along with Minister of Culture of Czech Republic Daniel Herman and Minister of Culture of Ukraine Yevhen Nyshchuk opened memorial plaque in honor of Václav Havel. The Václav Havel Bench The Václav Havel Bench Havel's Place is an artistic and urban utility project, created by Czech architect and designer Borek Šípek. It's composed of two wooden garden chairs connected by a round table, which has a hole inside. A linden, national tree of Czechia, is growing through this hole. These benches can be found in many Czech towns, as well as in some foreign locations Washington, D.C., Dublin, Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> Sculptures and busts On 19 November 2014, a bust of Václav Havel, created by Czech-American artist Lubomir Janeka, was unveiled at the U.S. Congress, commemorating the 25-year anniversary of the Velvet Revolution. Havel is the fourth European ever to be honored by having a bust of himself in the U.S. Congress, after Winston Churchill, Raoul Wallenberg and Leos Kossuth. Another sculpture of Havel is placed in a boardroom of Leinster House, a historical seat of Aurichters. On the 22nd of June 2017, a statue of Václav Havel, created by Georgian sculptor Juma Jikia, was unveiled in Tbilisi, Georgia. The Václav Havel Library Foundation donated a bust of Havel to Columbia University in New York City. This bust was unveiled on 27 September 2018 while Havel was being honored by former U.S. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. Works <laughs> 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 Topic collections of poetry Cetiri Rane Born Four Early Poems Zith V. Iron II, 1954 Quivers Iron II, Priveni Upizzi, 1955 First Promissory Notes Prostoria Casey, 1956 Spaces and Times N. A. Okraji Jara Cyclus Borsni, 1956 At the Edge of Spring Poetry Cycle Anticodi, 1964 Anticodes Topic. Plays Life Ahead, You Have Your Whole Life Ahead of You, 1959, Zivit Pred Sebu with Carol Brinder Motomorphosis, Motomorphosis, 1960-1961, Motomorphosa, a sketch from Autostarp 
Ella, Hella, and the Hitch, 1960-1961, Ella, Hella a Stop, a sketch for Autostop, discarded from the play, Lost, found in 2009, published in 2011. An Evening with the Family, 1960, Rodini Vessa. Hitchhiking, 1961, Autostop, with Ivan Weiskossel. The Best Years of Mrs. Hermanova, 1962, Nijlipshi Rocky Pani Hermanove, with Milos Makorek. The Garden Party, Zaradni Slavnost, 1963. The Memorandum, or the Memo, 1965, Virozumeni. The Increased Difficulty of Concentration, 1968, Stizanor Mosnos Saustradeni. Butterfly on the Antenna, 1968, Motel N.A. Antania. Guardian Angel, 1968, Andal Strasny. Conspirators, 1971, Spike Lensi. The Beggar's Opera, 1975, Zabrora Opera. Audience, 1975, Audience, Ivan E. K. Play. Unveiling, 1975, Vernissaz, Ivan E. K. Play. Mountain Hotel 1976, Horsky Hotel. Protest, 1978, Protest, Avani K. Play. Mistake, 1983, Chiba. Lago Desolato 1984, Lago Desolato. Temptation, 1985, Pokuseni. Redevelopment, 1987, Asinace. The Pig, or Witzwav Havel's Hunt for a Pig, Praise, Aneb Witzwav Havel's Hunt for a Pig, 1987, published in 2010, premiered in 2010, co-authored by Vladimir Mororovek. Tomorrow, 1988, Zetra Tespustimi. Leaving, Odchazany, 2007. Dozens of Cousins, Pet Tet, 2010, a Van E.K. play, a short sketch, sequel to Unveiling. Topic: Non-fiction books. The Power of the Powerless, 1985, includes 1978 titular essay. Online. Living in Truth, 1986. Letters to Olga, Dopazy Altsa, 1988. Disturbing the Peace, 1991. Open Letters, 1991. Summer Meditations, Letni Primetorni, 1992-93. Towards a Civil Society, 1994. The Art of the Impossible, 1998. To the Castle and Back, 2007. Topic: <laughs> Fiction books for children. Pizducks. Topic Films Odd Chazany, twenty eleven Topic Music Havel was a major supporter of the Plastic People of the Universe, and close friend of its leader, Milan HLAVSA, its manager, Ivan Martin Giris, and its guitarist, vocalist, Paul Wilson, who later became Havel's English translator and biographer, and a great fan of the rock band The Velvet Underground, sharing mutual respect with the principal singer-songwriter Lou Reed, and was also a lifelong Frank Zappa fan. Havel was also a great supporter and fan of jazz and frequented such Prague clubs as Radust FX and the Redditor Jazz Club, where U.S. President Bill Clinton played the saxophone when Havel brought him there. Topic. See also Civil resistance HRAD politics List of peace activists Nonviolent resistance Vitsuav Havel Human Rights Prize